I'm not going to say half, but probably a third of Cajuns and the rest of the black. And eventually they moved out. And I never forget, uh, something happened to our washing machine, and I had to go to the laundromat that sat on the corner of Brooklyn Park and Fendall Avenue. And while I was there, um, there was a gentleman talking about this lady who uh, <coughs> lived in my block. And she didn't want to move, but they forced her to move. I just, uh, I've always remembered it because I always thought that was the worst thing in the world. I remember her when I got there. She was a little old lady, and she was very friendly. And um, <coughs> but th those are the things that happened to them. They got letters, and you know, telling them the people that we were moving in, and they needed to leave, and that's the, that's what happened to a lot of them. Was it her family that told her told family? The uh, real estate, I guess, real estate people were writing the letters, the agents writing the letters, and uh, I guess whatever the piles would be, evidently they were on her and they were talking to a lot of them. But one of my neighbors, when I first got there, the neighbors that were directly in front of me had eight children. And where Trinity Church is now was a school, I think it was All Saints. Mm -hmm. And they all went to All Saints School. And um, eventually they moved out. But uh, the house next door, the, the lady that lived there, she was fine. She, she, she went about her business, she was a nurse. And she was out there at night watering her grass and her boots and her, and her slip. <laughs> but I guess I mean so it was you know it was good news. And we still learned they called her Aunt Charlotte. You know, she became really part of the neighborhood. But um but I just always remember that lady being forced to move out and she died. Well, 